Okay. I'm ready. Hey, Ariel. Are you going first or am I going first? Uh, you, I'll say, oh, hey, okay. Ariel, yeah, right. take it to the bridge. Okay. And I, I like you say, <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know. Just something funny. We got to put some laughs in there. <laughs> got to gotta have some laughs. I'm Eric Baker. You may know me from Tennessee Uncharted, but now I'm expanding my horizons to explore the entire Tennessee Valley. And I'm bringing my friend Ariel Nicole along for the ride. While sometimes we'll journey together, other times not. We hope to take you to places you never knew existed or where you've always dreamed of going. Water is the lifeline for every organism on Earth. And while it is indeed a necessity for all life forms, water also allows for transportation of goods and is a valuable source of energy and recreation. Home to the most biodiverse river system in North America, the Tennessee Valley's waterways have proven to be a complex interdependence between basic necessity, economic development, and recreation. A shining example of this interdependence is the Ocoee River in Polk County, Tennessee. The middle section of this river is floated by more people than any other whitewater river in the country. And Ariel and I are joining in on the fun with our friends from the Nantahala Outdoor Center, one of the many outfitters that guide this river. This is about as white water that it gets, right? This is pretty, uh, man, it looks pretty, this looks pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's good. It's my kind of speed right there. I requested the water to be like 86. About that, maybe a little yeah. cooler. OK, all right, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh, so the way that these dam release rivers work, all the water is held in some sort of a retention pond, like this lake. Then they use gravity to feed the hydroelectric system. When that water has traveled five miles, there's two big pipes that drop into a powerhouse. So all that gravity of the water dropping down those pipes mm -hmm. is what turns the turbines and creates electricity. OK. There are two main sections we wrap, the middle, which we'll see today, and then mm -hmm. the upper section. So we're doing the middle today? We're going to do the middle of this. Is okay. it the better section, it... or? Uh... They both have a lot to offer. So okay. this is a good one for a first timer, right? The middle's a great one oh, for a first timer. Right, yeah. People kind of casually refer to the middle of Coe as the Coe coaster. A Coe coaster. It's constant right. fun, you know. I'm gonna ride my first Ocoee coaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get suited and booted and get on the river. All right. Your vest, my lady. Thank you. Oops, yeah. Maybe. Huh? Sweet. Right. I feel official. Perfect fit. Let me get one last smile with all my teeth. One last smile. Did you count them? Yeah. Did you count all of them? One last smile. You got all uh... So, how do you feel? I'm nervous, excited, but I've always wanted to go whitewater rafting, so it's a great day to do that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So is this crazier than you thought it was going to be? I feel like it's about, like, I, I, I envisioned, like, giant, just, just like, massive water, and it, it's yeah. looking crazy. So yeah, that's pretty much what I envisioned. Let's have some fun, all, all right. All right, OK. Whitewater rafting the Ocoee, woo! Let's go ahead and move our boats forward. Everybody set? Paddles out, ready to go. Hands on T-grips. So this here is entrance rapid, y'all. Um, this is the longest rapid on the Yokoi River. Let's go forward one. It's gonna be going right over a ledge we call Grumpies. This is a class four rapid, y'all, so stay in the boat. If you fall out, swim to the right side bank, okay? Left side, go ahead and lean in. Keep leaning in, because here's the doozy, all right? Nice work. Nice. Great yeah, work. first <laughs> rapid. How was that? That was exciting. All right. <laughs> Woo! Nice yeah! work. So right here, within just like in our sight, we got three class three rapids. Is that rare to have that much action in one area? I mean, is That's, that? I think what makes the Ocoee the most rapid river in the country yeah. right now. It's mm -hmm. a whitewater playground. This is one of the squirrelier pieces of water that we're about to go through on the river. It looks kind of easy peasy, but all this water starts to split and go in weird directions right here. Get down! <laughs> Stay down! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> High fives. Woo! That was sick. 
the stop right there. That's perfect. That was awesome. Ah. <laughs> that yeah, was Cody, awesome. Right? I mean, yeah. first timer yes. right here. I'll be back. What is it about this river that's that's bringing people here? It's fun. It's challenging, and I think it's life changing. You know, if this is something you haven't done before, it gives you a new sense of confidence of I can do this. And when you're done. You feel tired, but it's that tired like I'm so done it, it was exhilarating. Yeah. Like it was so much fun. I loved every single moment yeah. of it. So can you explain to us more about the differences between the upper and the middle? The middle of Kobe, uh, it's kind of consistent class three, class four rapids with a little bit of class two in between. Um, the upper section has fewer rapids, but some that are a little bit bigger than what you see on the middle. Uh, but you don't, again, you don't have the same number and you don't have the same kind of constant nature for the top half. And then, you can get two different experiences, totally. Yeah, two yeah, very yeah. different experiences. And a lot of companies like us will run one full trip. So you go okay. up, you run the upper section, mm -hmm. pull over, eat a great lunch, kind of yeah. take a break. And then run the, the middle section. Yeah, okay. And, that would be a you know, killer including day. the lake, it's about 12, 13 miles or so oh, that wow. day. And that is a full yeah. day. So much fun. Amazingly so, well. You know, the NOC, you guys like you guys are like the fun providers for this river, yeah, right? We're, yeah, I we're mean, a fun factory, man. You know, the NOC we started in 1972 on the Nantahala River. Mm -hmm. And since then have expanded now operating on eight rivers across the southeast. Mm -hmm. And NOC is in some way contributing to 500,000 uh, you know, outdoor recreation days a year. Um, Amazing. Yeah. In adventures, in too, adventures. right? I mean, like yeah. today was an adventure, and, you know? I mean, like a bucket list thing, exactly. you know what I mean? I like to think of those as half a million dreams came true, lives were changed, you know, like eyes opened, all that kind of stuff. You know, I feel like my life was changed by today, for sure. I want to share this experience with my friends and family who have never been whitewater rafting, because it's so amazing. Well, and you know, just talking about the surrounding community and the economic impact that this water has on that community, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the ACOE sees just over 220,000 rafters every year. It's about 14 million in annual income that it produces. You know, that's hotel and lodging, food yeah. and beverage, gas, you know, all of the other attractions around here that folks get to see. Mm -hmm. um, plus, in addition to the ECOE, I mean, we're in the National Forest, and so you're getting folks also access to National Forest that they might not have had otherwise. We found out when we were just a little ways down the river that we had a legend yes. in a boat with us. Um, so Judy, you know, yeah, just you are. tell us, give us your history, your background. I started in 78, so I've been guiding every year since 1978. Which is how many years? This is beginning my 40th year. Wow. <laughs> and you're the first female river guide on the coast, And I was right? the only one for yeah. a couple of years at least. Initially, back in like 77, they didn't even have guides. They just rented equipment. And they uh, started saying, you know, maybe we should put some guides in the boat. So we ended up being coming um, and just learning and teaching ourselves. There was no guide manual back then. <laughs> we literally created it as we went yeah. and um, just loved it. What's brought you back all these years? <laughs> the people, the river, and, and you, it's different every single time. There are no two trips are identical. Who's the oldest person I, the, you've taken back? I think she was 80. <laughs> wow. And she ended up living to be 104. But I took her when she was 80. So maybe this is like the fountain of youth then, <laughs> maybe, right? Yeah. Right water will yeah. keep you forever young. Yeah. You know, one thing that the river offers that very few other things do is that it requires everything from you for you to get everything back out of it. You have to be emotionally, physically, spiritually, socially present in the moment to really get all that you can out of the river. Mm -hmm. And you get in what we call the flow state. You know, that, that's the goal as a guide, is to get our guests in that state where they are just so engrossed in what they're doing that everything else disappears. What you just described is totally what I experienced today. And it's yeah. not until you said it that I realized, man, I, how long has it been since I've smiled this much? How long has it been since, you know, I haven't been checking my email or whatever it may be? And so thank you. I, yeah. I mean, phone. washed, yeah. washed yeah. clean no by the worry. waters of the Echo. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> my worries have been washed away. Perfect. So, man. That's what we're after. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so uh -huh. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you to the thank NOC. You. Awesome. Thank you to the yeah. Echoe. Thank, thank you guys. You. We had a Can't blast. wait to come back. Yeah. Give me one of those. We'll be back. Judy. One thing that's hard to miss on this river adventure is the unique wooden flume that snakes along the mountainside. 
now run by TVA. It was built in the 1900s by the East Tennessee Power Company to carry water between dams for the purpose of providing electricity to their customers. But it's also where water is diverted from generation and allowed to flow over the dam on selected days to provide for whitewater rafting. Put your head in here. Yeah, let's do this. Keep your eyes out. Look out for each other as we're walking across on the bridge. Can we jump on the bridge or anything like that? Or it, You can, but I would not. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Every year you're saying, don't do this, don't do that. I'm like, oh, I want to do it so bad now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> So we're ready to go? Yes. Yeah, man. Right. Let's have some fun. Let's go. Straight up Indiana Jones Bridge. Check it out. I've never walked across a bridge like this before. No? No. Ooh, look at it bounce. Hey, good luck. All right. So, uh, something about the dams you may not know, that this is a wood structure built out of wooden cribs that uh, they come and put this spray concrete over top of. Wood underneath there. Yeah. It looks so different without all the, the water. I mean, I know there's rocks underneath the river, but to really be able to see it today. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, What's next? So this is the flume gate. This is what I was telling them. When this is open, we're generating, like now. Okay. And if it's closed, we're diverting water across the, the top of the dam for the recreation. Okay. We, we do maintain this ourselves. When we have a break, we have a group of laborers and carpenters come in and fix it ourselves. So. Right. Exactly how long is the flume? So it's approximately five miles long from, from the flume gate to the powerhouse. And it winds along the side of the mountain the whole way. There are tongue and groove boards that are pressure treated now. They didn't used to be pressure treated, but we have to have them custom built for, the, for it. Interesting thing is uh, it has to be wet to seal. If you put it all together dry and put water in it, it will leak like crazy. So it has to like get water in it and get it moving. Mm -hmm. And in a few days, everything will start tightening up and, mm. and sealing up, so. And I think, I mean, what's so interesting is how advanced the mechanics and the engineering 100 years ago, because a lot of, you're using the same essentially thing. the same right. thing. Yeah, that's so, so impressive. And as far as what this generates, I mean, is it enough to power a small city, a small? Yes, yes, a small town. Really? Yes. And, it, and it did. Yeah. You know, at one time, this was the only Okoye 1 and 2 were Tennessee Power Company, and that was it. Right. Uh, Okoye 3 wasn't here. TVA was just getting, getting kicked off. I guess if the power ever stops generating, you can always turn this into an amusement park ride or something. I, like, the, the coolest <laughs> lazy river <laughs> yeah. of all time. <laughs> David Land. No, I don't even call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Some waters are best for wet and wild adventures, while others offer restorative peace and quiet, like here on the Clinch River located below Norris Dam and just north of Knoxville, Tennessee. Well stocked by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, the Clinch fishes well year round because the stream stays very cold even during the summer months. Our Three Rivers Angler Guides tell me fly fishing here can be challenging at times, but equally as rewarding. It's pretty. It is pretty. I'm guessing it's just real shallow throughout this whole part here, right? Oh, Whoa, hey, big fella. Oh, dang. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> There's fish in there. Yeah, that's a good sign. At least there's one fish in here we know for sure. I'll let you catch that one. OK, all right. All right. With my bare hands, with my bare teeth. This is gonna go great. Channel, channel your inner ninja. Let's do this. Shh. just took a water temp at 61 degrees, and that's maybe a little warm for this river. We're kind of looking more for like 55 to 58. Right here, we have like a lot of calmer flat water, mm -hmm. and then down here, we have what we call a riffle, which is real shallow water that's chopped up, and that just means that all this water has a lot more oxygen in it. 
So when the water temp's warmer, the fish are getting less oxygen, so they'll probably be in stuff that's got a little bit more chop to it. Okay. Um, so we'll kind of focus probably towards the end of that and where it drops into a, a deeper section of river where bigger fish will hang out. Well, what we're doing right now, we're kicking up bugs and they'll be concentrated to those areas that have foam and those fish will lay in there because they know that's where all the food's coming from. Yeah, and then as a fisherman, that's what you're aiming for. Yeah. This will definitely have some in here. So look at all these guys. Yeah, you flap it on them. Oh, wow, yeah. Just hold that. They'll, they'll fall in your hand. They should. Oh, yeah, these little guys. So these are these are called scuds. OK. And they're um, almost like a, like a little roly-poly that's aquatic. And um, they're a consistent food source for these trout. OK. So they don't, they don't ever hatch. They're always in the water. Um, so it's a reliable food source for these fish. Okay. Um, so, you know, we'll just give you an idea of, you know, what's in the river, because you're going to have to match that with the fly choices that you make. Right. So, like, this would be a scud pattern that I throw. Okay. And it's a little bit bigger than the ones that we saw in the, in the so water. So it's not just what's in the air, it's what's down below. Yeah. It? So you saw the, uh, the real version, and now this is what we're going to be fishing with. If it's a smart fish to begin with, the more you can know about it and know oh, its yeah. habits and oh, habitat yeah. and what it's looking for and what it likes, the better fisherman yeah. you're going to be. On that back cast, you don't want to break your wrist because that's shooting it all back down in the water. OK. So try to keep your wrist straight and stop it okay. early. Like that? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Very good. That's See exactly that, what we Way want. Way to go. And you don't want to kind of cast um, straight and then let that uh, drift downstream. There you go. And then you're gonna mend on every cast. We're gonna watch that indicator, that green thing. Mm -hmm. I can and still kind of see Yeah, it. and if it ever just goes under, that's when you're gonna go straight up with the rod. When you do set the hook, it's it's a you know quick, it's like you're making a back cast. So it's, you're gonna raise that rod tip, and um, a good thing to think about is it's like you're, you're answering the phone, but somebody's talking really loud. Okay. So it's like just off your Ooh, ear that's... like that. You're like, eh, eh. Go back, pause, forward, stack and then just kind of track with it. Just like, like this? Mm -hmm. The anticipation, man, I love it. It's real. Oh! <laughs> fish on, boys, fish on! Nice. <laughs> there you go. Nice, dude. Okay, keep All it right. in there. Boy, look how pretty. <laughs> get, in, get in there. Oh, yeah. Little rainbow. Nice. Not gonna get skunked today. That was a happy accident. Yeah, so that's probably a stock trout that they just put in there. Okay. Pretty recently. Um, but they're important. Uh, it's a trophy, man. We did find a dumb one. Takes one to know one, right? <laughs> or like, he felt sorry for me. I caught a bigger one, Eric. So. Is that a young one, I feel like? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Caught a rainbow trout. So we less. just let him go? Um, so. If you want, take that right glove off real quick mm -hmm. and just grab him just like this and just kind of hold his belly so his, he's just right there in your hand. Okay. And I'll, hold oh, on. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Then let him go? Yeah. Nice. All right, you're on the board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's beautiful is this is open to everybody. Yep, absolutely. Beautiful thing about all the water we have is we get to chase a lot of different species. Warm water fish like bass and carp and striper and musky, pretty much all within an hour of town. So. With a diverse ecosystem and fish that are biting, it's safe to assume we've got a healthy river here. And the family that runs the Ocoee and Marina in Parksville Lake do too and they've earned a clean marina certification. All right, it's a beautiful morning. The sun is shining. We yes. are on a boat on the water, this beautiful marina, this beautiful clean marina. Yes. We're here to talk about the Tennessee Valley Clean Marina Program. So tell us, I guess, let's start out and you just tell us what that's all about. 
The program started about 17 years ago as a way to recognize those marinas that do a little bit more to take care of the water resource. The water is where they make their money, so that you would think they would protect it, but some marinas slide a lot of times and don't do a really good job. So TVA created this program to recognize those marinas that are doing more. And since you are a Tennessee Valley certified clean marina, how would you say that benefits this marina? For a lot of marinas, if there's more than several marinas on the reservoir, if you're the only certified marina, then I would think it might increase your business a little bit. Yeah, and some so. marinas have told us that's the case. Yeah. Some people are willing to drive a few extra miles as long as they know the marina is taking necessary steps to, to protect the resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It shows the public how that marina or the folks that manage it or own it care about the environment. So as we look around us, what makes a clean marina? The program itself encompasses about seven different areas, and we look at fuel management, we look at waste management, sewage management, stormwater management, public education, and then how you manage your facilities. And how would a marina go about getting certified? They would need to contact TVA. You can contact us through our public land information line, and it's really easy. We've got a checklist we go through, so if they just want to call me, I'll come out and sit down with them. It takes us about two hours, start to finish. Why should we care? Why is this important? It's important because we want to make sure these reservoirs are here for future generations to enjoy. And the Clean Marina program is just one way to ensure that. We feel the same way, right? Yeah. I think everybody at home would too. I mean, you, you have grandchildren or kids. I mean, you want your, you know, you want the next generation to be able to enjoy that. I know that I loved spending time on the lake. I'm sure you do. Totally. Your, your daughter probably does too. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think it is Absolutely. very important. So thank you for what you're doing. Well, thank yeah. you. And we appreciate it. Are you going to come out on the boat with us? Mm -hmm. Okay. If yeah, you want to, yeah. I can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think we've been sitting I here talking yeah. enough, right? I don't think they've gotten ga enough gas in here. Yeah. So I say we hit the hit the open water now. Yeah. Is that all right? Oh, that'd be great. Let's okay. go. Ryan Cook an owner of the Ocoeana Marina, is showing us his favorite ways to experience Parksville Lake. A typical day on the lake is pack your boat up, cooler, kayaks, stand up paddle boards, go out on the lake and play. Nice, yeah. uh, Lots of activities out here. The official name of the lake is Parksville Lake. Locals call it Lake Ocoee. Uh, because the Okoy River flows into this lake. We are uh, the only rafting company and the only marina here on this lake. So we learned a little earlier that you guys are a clean marina, certified yes. marina. We think it's very important to keep the water clean so our grandchildren and their children can still use this lake down the road and, and it's not contaminated. I know TVA and EPA, they test water quality on, on reservoirs all over the place, and I always emphasize to people that there are no restrictions as far as eating fish out of this lake. The lake is clean, it is doing well, and we want to keep it that way. Yeah. So where are you taking us like right now? Where are we going? So right now we've come out of the marina and we're heading back west in the lake and we're gonna go to the larger of the two islands. It's a good camping spot to hang hammocks, put your chair out, have a picnic, lunch. All the campsites here on the lake are primitive camping. There is not a reservation system for these sites. They are water access only, so it is first come, first serve. And there actually is a small rope swing on the back side of the nice. island that the kids <laughs> yeah. really enjoy. Like so? There you go. Like so. so. I love it here, right? <laughs> I love it here. Good. Can I bring you a mojito or something, ma'am? What would you like? I would love a mojito. Okay, all right, let's see. Uh, where's the bar? <laughs> this is beautiful, right? Yes, it's How lucky gorgeous. Are we? I feel very blessed to be here. I'm yeah. so excited. I get to paddleboard today, and I've never been. All right, let's see. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> That's your fun stick. The more fun you want to have, the more paddle you stick in the water. I like that. Yeah. Stand up paddleboard in Parksville Lake. Holler if you hear me. <laughs> Ahoy! Arr, matey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready to race? Oh, man. OK, all right, okay. here we go. Let's go for it. Come mm. on, paddleboard. <laughs> yeah, paddleboard <laughs> part of the lake. somebody who's in my league. This is not fair. Slap the bait. Ariel and I have had some serious fun on these Tennessee Valley waterways. White water, calm water, above water, and underwater. But we hope the real takeaway is that through the enjoyment of our waterways and lands, we will all become stewards of our rich natural resources.